Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part five of Project Ultron. The aim is to build a life-size Ultron torso, which is partly driven by motion capture and partly driven by its own AI using sensing in the environment. So it's going to be quite a socially interactive robot. In the last couple of episodes, I've done some R&D around the motion capture and driving an arm using Euler angles to see how that's going to work out. And I've also built series elastic actuators in a test rig to see how we can give the joints a rudimentary sense of touch and pressure feedback. I was going to do some more R&D this time on using clutches to use one main motor to drive multiple joints, but I've decided I'm going to do that as I go further down the build because I think a lot of those joints are actually going to need independent motors. So this time I've decided we're actually going to get on and build some of the life-size Ultron because I think that's what people really want to see. I built some walking robots in the past and some of them were about five feet tall and they didn't work too badly and that was about 10 years ago so I think I can do a better job of that now. However, uh, this is not going to be a walking robot. If I do leg developments, that's going to be a separate project and I may even pick a different character. Let's see what's in Star Wars when it comes out. So for now, I'm going to be building the torso on this tripod. And I picked this up on a car boot sale about a year ago and it's been in my house ever since. It's actually a telescope tripod. And it did have this great big heavy top on it, which is for mounting the telescope. Um, so I've taken that off and the rest of this is actually quite lightweight. I can easily pick that up with one hand or one finger. It's quite a nice good quality aluminium tripod and the legs also extend so that it can go much higher. This is about the tallest it goes, so it goes up kind of to my chest height. So if you can imagine Ultron's torso on that looking down on you, this is going to be quite a good sturdy basis to build it on. And Ultron is going to be built to be about probably 20 to 30 percent bigger than a human. So it's going to be quite menacing sat up there. My first plan was to make this base that goes onto the tripod and then build a kind of gimbal arm that holds um, Ultron up between the shoulder blades. So essentially what we've got here is a big arm and then the red parts can pivot about one of these holes and the other one has an actuator on that sort of moves it like a linear actuator. So I'm not quite sure where it was going to pivot, I was going to build it and see. Um, and then the whole thing can lean forward about one of those pivot points and right at the top we'd have another pivot which means it can turn sideways. So essentially the whole torso is suspended and it can lean all around. Now it turned out that this whole assembly needs to be about a metre tall, um, which is quite a lot of printing. And although I've done quite a lot of big structures with 3D prints, um, I'm not sure how bendy that's going to be once this sort of 20% bigger than human sized Ultron is hung on top of it. Then I decided that was a really bad idea after drawing some diagrams, uh, mainly because I can never change the base for Ultron. It'd be quite good maybe even to put it on a wheeled base one day, so it'd be preferential if it can actually support itself through its own torso with a proper spine, abdominal muscles and all of those things, and making it really biologically inspired. So uh, this is the top view of Ultron. So having looked at quite a lot of reference pictures, it would appear Ultron doesn't actually have a spine at the bottom of its body. It has kind of a big hole, which has got a lot of red in it. Um, and then its spine seems to start halfway up at the actual top of the torso. So um, the plan is basically to build this thing up in layers and make it flexible by printing NinjaFlex rubber sections, which are like bushings that go in between each rigid layer. Now it looks like Ultron's got two spines around its kidney area some sort of flexible conduits that go up at the sides, which I'm actually going to have to convey wires up to the top. And at the front, there's something that looks like three actuators. There's one here in the, which would be the abdominal muscles, and then one each side, uh, which look like they could be some form of linear actuator or piston. So the basic plan is to have these towers being stacked up with NinjaFlex and ABS, and also having this kind of link, which is a bit like a spine, but it's gonna curve inwards. And this is gonna be printed in two tones, silver and red ABS. So these parts will be red, the outer shell parts, these are the hips, they'll be silver, and then these parts will probably be red linear actuators with silver parts on the front. Um, so it looks like Ultron, but the inside is red. So that's the um, sort of hub of the base on the tripod, so that doesn't go any higher. Um, and then stacked on top of that, of course, will be the top of the torso where all of the shoulder joints are and various other bits and pieces and a spine that goes up the top and the head will be mounted on the top. And in fact, this is the design as far as I've designed it. So we've got this octagonal base, which was actually the same part as with the gimbal arm, which is split into two sections, which I should just be able to print in ABS. They're about 20 mil high each. 
so they should be fairly substantial in about a 30% infill. And then we've got these red bars which go in the slots and um, those um, in turn will have four sort of hubs onto the extents of them which will probably be linked and just sit slightly outside them and that'll be for the two pistons at the front and also for the um, sort of ninja flex tower spine kidney pieces at the back so i'm going to get these parts printed out and see how physically big it is and then i'm going to scale the rest before i design it because i don't want this thing to be too big or too small got all these parts printed so i've got these quite substantial base pieces which are incredibly tough and that's going to mount onto the tripod and i've got these pieces I'm just solvent welding the other pair together, so they're made in two 10mm sections, uh, which is about the thickest we can reliably print. These came okay in 20mm, there is a bit of warpage though unfortunately, doesn't really affect anything, so those will slot in like so. We'll have two of those and then another two cross pieces, which will basically have the bulkheads on for the two flexible sort of spine kidney pieces and the two actuators for the ab muscles. The next part up is another layer which actually has the mounting points on and these parts are too big to fit on the bed so I've cut them up and put these dovetail joints in so they can be solvent welded snugly together and again all the parts will be solvent welded with acetone since they are ABS. Now um, obviously I, what I could have done was just made a base with the four mounting points in the corners which would seem more logical but in fact building up this lattice in this sort of structure gives me a much stronger structure that's less flexible and it's kind of important because the entire thing is going to be mounted on those mounting points essentially sitting on top of them. So the ones at the front, the two on the um, very front pieces will be the two sort of pistons, the main parts that shift the torso around and I've got two mounting holes on each of the back corners and that is basically going to be where the ninja flex bushings sit and um, essentially cords will go through ninja flex kind of tubes and those are the pieces i'll design next and that'll tie all of the spine together Here they are. I'm not quite sure why I thought they wouldn't fit on the bed because um, they would have fitted fine and um, I wouldn't have needed this seam but um, it's quite interesting trying this dovetail joint. I, I pulled the surfaces back by about 0.2mm and now they're an extremely good fit. So it doesn't really matter that they're in two parts. This one I've already done a solvent weld with a bit of acetone so I'll do the same with that and then we can fit those on. Here it is, so I've got that piece clamped while the solvent weld goes off with it in place. I did actually put little screw holes in so I can just screw those together while the solvent weld goes off just to hold everything in place. The next part of this is slightly more interesting. So this is the main spine section of Ultron which goes on those two back pads. Now the blue sections here are going to be printed again in red ABS so those are rigid and that locks the two towers together and the purple parts are going to be printed in Ninja Flex. So it's going to be a fairly low density infill about 20% so that they do compress but they do of course have to hold up the majority of the weight of of Ultron with all the motors and so on and the head and the shoulder and the arm. So uh, what I've got here are holes that run all the way through so I'm going to be putting some cord through those and uh, tightening that tight and it probably won't be stretchy cord it'll be something either nylon 3D printer filament or some nylon cord which will be tensioned at each end so the only way it can twist and turn is if the Ninja Flex compresses. Obviously the two actuators will fit onto the front parts and that will cause the, the torso to twist and turn around. So hopefully you can see how this is building up quite a biologically inspired kind of um, spine and lower torso. This is all the parts laid out, so the uh, Ninja Flex parts will be printed in pairs, and of course the um, other sections there, the other layers, will be printed separately on a printer with a bigger bed. I've sliced up the Ninja Flex parts in Cura, in uh, what is high speed mode which gives you about 20% infill by default and uh, I'm using Cura because it matches the e-steps of the new flexi extruder for the Lulzbot Mini which I fitted in last week's video so have a look at that if you missed it. Well it's printing but I don't think that that's going to be dense enough to make the uh, piece be strong enough so when they're all stacked up it's not too wobbly so I'm going to try some different settings and maybe try and get some more shell perimeters on there and probably a slightly denser infill. 
Well, that's definitely denser. It might be too dense, but these are the first blocks at the bottom, so I don't want them to be too wobbly anyway. So we'll see how that goes. I guess I'm still getting used to the Cura infill densities. That is 40%. But we'll print the whole thing out. It's going to take quite a while and see how squashy it is. Right, here they are. So they printed. In that density, it took 12 hours. But they are really nice prints. Look at that surface on there. There's a bit of ooze here where I printed them both on the same bed and obviously the extruder has gone between them on each layer. But the rest of them are really lovely Ninja Flex prints. This is the first print I've actually printed on the Flex extruder on the Mini. But that surface is amazing. And I think that was a 0.4mm layer height and it's a 0.6mm nozzle, but they look absolutely great. Um, the problem is though, they're really stiff. That was a 40% infill. Uh, if I put my whole weight on, I can hardly compress them. So perhaps what I did want was something like this, which I think was probably a claim to be 20%. It looked lower to me. Um, but this has only got one perimeter and this one had four. So I think I'm going to do the next blocks up in this infill in 20%, but with four perimeters and we'll see how that works out. So these fit onto my spine just here. So that of course goes on there and there. And then the next layer goes on top and then there's another set of blocks and so on. All my holes line up so I can tension some cord through there. But at the moment this isn't going to provide any flexibility at all. Um, however, these of course are the blocks at the bottom. So that's not necessarily bad. The, the spine could get more flexible as it goes up. So um, I may come back and reprint these, but next I'm going to print the next ones and we'll see how that works out and then work the way up the spine. And all these other pieces of course are printed, which will get stacked up as we go. So we're now back to this type of infill density, but with four perimeters. And now you can see this is a much squashier part. So it'll squash right down and uh, that should be about right. But it's still quite strong from the top, so it's still going to support the weight. And my towers won't be too wobbly, but they should be able to flex and so on, which is what I want. Here is my current stack of spine pieces. So I've got another one to go there, another two, and then another layer to go on top. And that should make the complete spine that supports the top of the torso. I finally printed all the pieces. I think I've done about 60 hours of printing, including these Ninja Flex pieces. At least these two were 12 hours and the others were about eight hours a pair, plus all of the plastic. And what I've done is just threaded Ninja Flex through. So it just goes in a loop down the two holes and out the bottom. And I may replace that. I haven't decided with what yet. It might be some more flexible bungee cord or it might be some really tight cord. And what I'll probably do is build sort of screw tensioners on the bottom to pull that down so I can tension it up as I build the robot up. But for now, it's quite good if I just grip this. Um, Ninja Flex filament is quite sort of stretchy anyway, so it makes quite a good thing for um, drive belts and things, which is actually where it originated from at Fenner Drives who make it. So um, if I just grab this, we can see that um, this is actually quite sturdy, so that will easily hold the robot up, but it can kind of twist which is quite good. And as I loosen this off, it'll obviously become more twisty. And of course it can bend over and all sorts of things. Um, the Ninja Flex doesn't compress as much as I thought. So, you know, there are gaps. And if I put flexible bungee in that, then the gaps will be bigger, but it's quite forgiving because the pieces, you know, compress and they're quite bendy. So we can get some quite organic motions out of this. So if you can imagine there being two pistons on the front here that push up, and are maybe connected to some of these layers, perhaps again with flexible linkages, we should be to make this whole thing twist around um, and do some quite organic things. So that's really what I was looking for. Um, obviously, I have, I'm pretty constrained by the, the um, a, anatomy of Ultron having these two pistons. Ideally, I want something that can actually turn this, whereas it's more likely just to lean it to one side as the pistons get uh, longer and shorter. So I'm not sure how much actual twist I'm gonna get out of the spine. There is this other central thing which we could maybe use to twist as well. We'll have to see how that works out. So at the moment, this doesn't look massive. It doesn't look like a giant, uh, but we do have some uh, silver parts to go on the outside, which are more rigid pieces, which are gonna be spaced apart from this down the back also covering the pistons at the front. We've got the two kind of conduit bits to come up the sides, um, and then obviously the torso on top. So it's gonna end up with a fairly large physique. That's it for this week's video. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects, including my Star Wars BB-8 droid, both versions, my Star Wars R6 droid, and of course Hulkbuster, which is standing right behind me, and I'll be continuing with next time.